Welcome back everyone, a very warm welcome to you, hope your day is going fine. My name is Nick, we're on the ZX Spectrum and we're looking at a platformer called Ed the Duck on the 48K. Now you control, well, Ed the Duck, who I first saw as a glove puppet alongside Andy Peters on a kid's um, television show way, way back in the day. It might have been alive and kicking or the broom cupboard, but we'll select our keys, we'll see how far we can get. But the idea is Ed the Duck must progress through the echelons of the BBC and end up running the place by collecting 20 stars over different stages. So let's see how we go. Right, so I'm Ed down the bottom there. It's not a character I um, loved a great deal as, as a kid. I preferred Gordon the Gopher alongside Philip Schofield that come a little bit before. It's a little bit floaty, yes. And if we hit any of the enemies, we will, um, well, die straight away. Right, so you can see your stars left to collect are 19. And when you die, you don't have to start all over again. It remembers how many stars you've got, but it does put you to a previous point. Right, okay. But as I say, the stars don't disappear, reappear again. Now, by shooting the enemy, they don't actually die. They just freeze for a certain amount of time. Looks like we've got um, an unlimited amount of fire play. Um, I don't really like this at the moment. It's a bit too floaty for me. It looks like the computer's struggling to actually draw everything, and it's slowing it a little bit down. But I like the way yeah, you're gradually going up the screen rather than the flip screen horizontally, which is uh, quite good. Bit bobble bobblish, I suppose, or Rainbow Islands, you could say. Maybe it's got its um, inspiration from there. But this was published by Impulse in 1990, so it's a little bit late in the Spectrum's uh, run. It has to be said. Might work better over 128k, but this is 48k. Yeah, I'm not liking it a great deal. I like the way the water's going up and down there at the bottom. Bit of colour clash, Ed the Duck's head there against the red flag. If you had this one back in the day, uh, let me know. If I'd had it back in the day as a kid, it's, I don't think it's one I would have played a great deal because it would have frustrated me a little bit. If we don't get very far, I'll put a poke on it for invincibility just so we can see what the end of stage one looks like. But um, I can see some kids would have liked this. Not me, though. There's a smiling... Uh, moon there. It's aimed at kids. I'm an adult of course, the first time I played it, so some of it might be a bit lost on me. It's game over. Right, so let's have one last um, proper go should we say, then if, if not I'll put the poke on it. And when, when the poke's on for invincibility, Ed the Duck flashes a little bit, so uh, hope it doesn't do your eyes in. Yes, okay, come on. Now the other game we review today, if you're watching these live as they go up, was Donkey Kong and that was much better than this one uh, from Ocean in the 80s. This one is about four years later after that one. I know which one I'd be playing, but it's trying to push the spectrum as much as it can do. Lives are set out over screens. You can see takes three, and that's how many lives we've essentially got left. Helps if you're a Ed the Duck fan. I wasn't Gordon the Gopher for me, but I'm not sure if there's any Gordon the Gopher games. If there are, let me know, and maybe I should check them out. But the HUD at the bottom is pretty cool. Um, you know, it's got two Ed the Ducks there, Ed 1 and Ed 2. I'm doing this over one player. Ed the Duck. Well, was he a real duck or was he a glove puppet? But it's not my favourite of ducks. I much prefer Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, anyone that's a duck really, apart from uh, Ed. He's alongside Scrappy Doo for me as not favourite characters. But yes, it's all Andy Peters' fault. Andy Peters needed a sidekick like Philip Schofield had Gordon the Gopher, so Ed the Duck turned up. Hmm. Not sure he got his own cartoon though, but he's got his own game here. Some young kids would have liked it, I'm finding it a bit frustrating. So let's put a cheat on it then for immunity, just so we can see what the first couple of stages will look like. So if you're going to buy it, or track it down, you can see is it worth trying to get forward. So, Ed the Duck will be flashing a bit, that just um, shows you that the invincibility is on. I'll still try and play it properly, but uh, yes. So by shooting the enemy, you can stun them, although it doesn't destroy them, so it frees them for a certain amount of time, so you're um, immune getting past them. There's a teddy boy, a teddy boy, a teddy bear, might be a teddy boy as well, a fish, some hand going up and down. So the enemies are quite good, the graphics are quite good, it's just that it's a little bit slow and a little bit floaty as well. Not sure about this yellow against the blue. Maybe it changes as we go further up here. But yeah, the only game I can sort of compare it to in this sort of like genre going up stages like this is Rainbow Islands. I reviewed that on the 128K Spectrum and it was a lot more fun uh, than this. It's pretty good and had some music in it as well. So if you haven't seen the review of that one, check that down. 
so you've got a comparison of the two but uh, that is mile, miles better than this one I like the way this is coded there's a lot going on there's a few things to like but the playability for me isn't quite there uh, but if you put in the practice though you could possibly overcome that these reviews are all about what your first or second go would have been like uh, as a kid with a short attention span quite often would there be enough there for you to want to go back and play it again and for me i think there's better choices available i wouldn't have gone back maybe once or twice maybe when i was a bit bored but it wouldn't have been a go-to game for me for sure it's colorful enough though it's colorful enough collect all the stars and then you're good in Rainbow Islands there was a gradually increasing uh, water level that went up so if you hung about yeah, that would catch you up. The main character and that always reminded me a little bit of Eric Cartman but that's before Eric Cartman was invented. I don't think that was uh, an intention to create a, a fat kid but uh, that's what it certainly looked like to me. Oh I've missed that star, goodness. So I would have died about three or four times over by now and more. Stars left to collect six. I can see a kid getting addicted to this if they put in the practice. My attention span wouldn't have been uh, a great deal to actually be able to do that. Come on, Ed. Ed the Duke. Or the Duck. We'll tap that cloud there. Oh, it's got a bit Christmassy up here, is it? Yeah, how do we get up the top there? Um, can we jump on the snowman? No. Um, how do we get up there? Christmas tree? Hmm. Is this a bit of a bug? How do we get up there? Uh Oh, we could jump on that. That wasn't that wasn't obvious. That wasn't very obvious that that was a ledge then. I thought that was just a bit of the background, well, fair enough. Could have been a bit more noticeable that one. That would have confused a stupid kid, which I certainly was. Hooray! Come on, Ed, do this do this stuff now. Can ducks fly? Can ducks fly? I think they can fly, can't they? So why is he jumping on ledges if he can just fly up the top? Ed the Duck is a nincompoopin. Nincompoop. Right, okay, so two stars to collect, which probably means we're quite near the top. Apparently on this game, uh, stage seven is impossible to complete because they've only put 19 stars out when there should be 20. Right, but there's a, there's a, I think there's a hack to fix that. So there's a little rhyme for you. There's more to be done, so off you must run. Well, okay. Shall we? Let's just let's just do stage two then. See if it's got any difference. We'll keep the poke on, and then we'll get out of here. But I won't go out of your way to track this one down or pay any serious coin for it. The enemy seems more or less the same here, so it's just the level design that's different. There's the sun there with glasses. I don't know why those glasses aren't burning to a crisp because that sun is made out of hydrogen and helium burning at a billion zillion degrees. Perhaps they're special glasses, but I'm analysing it too much. This this is an 8-bit computer game from 1990 by Impulse. Yeah, I'm not sure if this came out on any of the 16-bits, you know, Commodore Amiga. Wouldn't be surprised if someone coded it across. Could certainly try and track that down. Du, 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 du. Come on, Ed the Duck. He hasn't got a theme tune, of course. But we're just bouncing up now. Doesn't matter how far you fall down. You're not going to die there. It's just colliding normally into your enemies who uh, kill you. Uh, unless you can stun them with these, well, yellow balls of fire. If you have got yellow balls of fire, either go to the doctors or comment below. I'll always like hearing from you. Right. If you like uh, the, the channel and you haven't so far, please consider subscribing because that always helps. Also helps me continue as well. Because as I say, YouTube is a very competitive thing, especially retro gaming. And if you subscribe and watch the videos, that help me in the uh, search algorithm. Hooray! Right, okay. It's got its own style, this. It's played pretty much what your first or second goal would have been like. Uh, it's all about beating stress, having a bit of fun with nostalgia, and not taking yourselves too seriously. If you want, it could be sort of like we're having we're two friends having a chat down the pub about old times. So it's not encyclopedic, that's what I'm saying. Boom. Come on, Ed, get to the top, sir. Pass that, uh, that well, that little hand there. It's got a special cuff with a cuff link on it, so I don't think it's that uh, one out of the Adams family. Anyway, they look like um, those fish thing, if indeed they are fish, look like they could be out of Monty Python's Flying Circus, which is another game we reviewed, but it wasn't overly good, although it was some quite funny graphics on it. Again, it wasn't very playable. This one, strangely enough, is more playable 
the Monty Python, but it might be that I've just got a poke on it. Yeah, but uh, graphics are okay, I suppose, pretty good. It's just not exciting me a great deal. Don't know why. Sometimes you get games a bit like that. Not sure what it scored back in the day in terms of the ratings. I wouldn't have scored it very high. I probably would have given it a 5.5, .5, maybe a 5. I'm a, I'm a cruel marker, aren't I? Up, up and away. How many stars we got left? Three. So we must be quite near the top. And then we'll say goodbye to this game, because it's not a game really I want to spend hours on. I didn't even want to spend... It's not terrible, is it? But I didn't really want to spend 15 minutes on it, 10 minutes even. Ed the Duck. Yeah, if it had been Mickey Mouse, I suppose it might have been a big hit. But uh, And then I think it would have been slightly better, because they would have coded it a little bit better. So don't worry about the, the flashing Ed the Duck, because it wouldn't flash if you was playing it properly. Yeah. Hmm. The director's happy. We'll call that a wrap. Well, I think we will do. Avoiding the traps. Well, it's about time I shut my trap up. We, we moved, moved on. So, hope you liked having a look at that one. Uh, not a favourite game of mine, but okay. Average. It was Ed the Duck on the ZX Spectrum 48K, published by Impulse in 1990. Um, and, well, as platformers go, there are better ones about. So, if you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then please put that below. Always love reading your comments and seeing what you think about the games. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond. Goodbye. Goodbye.